Hi, welcome to the Ruckus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Uh, today we're going to look at um, kind of a fun project. Uh, I'm sure most of us have a Raspberry Pi sitting around uh, in a drawer somewhere. And uh, so I thought I would create a video on how to use uh, your Raspberry Pi and create an ICX uh, uh, console server, right? So it's, it's always nice to be able to get to the console of your ICX remotely. Um, the console will always be accessible, right? Even if there's a loop in the network or if there's some sort of, you know, major network issue that you can't, uh, you know, SSH or Telnet or, or get to the uh, web GUI of a, of a device, the serial console is always going to be available to you. So I thought I'd just create a little, uh, a little video. And so, you know, in the picture here, here's my Raspberry Pi. It's a, it's an old one. Um, it's got the two USB ports on it. Um, and so basically it's just, this is a USB C to USB A, uh, serial console cable, uh, plugged into the Raspberry Pi. Um, there's an ethernet con connection in order to, you know, SSH into the Raspberry Pi to get to, to the serial console. Um, or this one is a uh, USB A to DB9 uh, converter, and then uh, using the uh, the DB9 to RJ45 serial cable that came with the switch, uh, we can do it that way. So, um, and it it'll also support multiple serial. Uh, 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 ports so you know you can have that Raspberry Pi have two different connected two different switches or in the newer Raspberry Pis they have four USB ports on them so you know in theory you could have four different serial ports or there's even some breakout cables which I haven't tried but there's you know four to one um, USB breakout to serial cables so you could you could try that as well uh, and support up to 16 on a Raspberry Pi but you know one or two is usually sufficient um, the other good reason to do this is if you're deploying switches remotely, you can always send them out with a Raspberry Pi, and then you can get to the console and finish the configuration remotely as long as you know the, the IP address of that Raspberry Pi, right? Uh, even if the switch doesn't have an IP address on it or you don't know the switch's IP, as long as you can get to the Raspberry Pi, you can finish your configuration. So kind of a cool uh, little project, and, and uh, let's see how that works. So the first thing we're going to do is go to uh, raspberrypi.org slash downloads and uh, grab the appropriate version of the uh, Raspberry Pi imager for Windows or Mac or, or Linux, whatever your operating system is. So and then we're going to download that file and install it. And then when we run imager, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to choose uh, Raspbian as uh, what we're going to install. and uh, and so then we choose a storage device, so 8 gig or better uh, flash card, um, and then choose write. And it takes a while to write it to that, so it, it erases what's on your, what's on your um, card, so make sure you don't use anything that you need. Um, but that takes a while, and when it's done, you can take that out, install it in your Raspberry Pi, and then... Um, and boot up the Pi. So I didn't show you the beginning of this where you walk through the you know time zone settings and stuff, but uh, once you get the Raspberry Pi up and running, we're gonna open a terminal window and then we need to enable SSH. So if you do a sudo raspy-config um, and run through the Raspberry Pi configuration tool, we're gonna go to interface options. And then the second option here is SSH. Uh, so the what we're doing is we're enabling the SSH server. So it says you want to enable SSH um, and caution, you know, default uh, or weak passwords are, are an issue. So uh, run through that. It takes a second to enable that SSH server, but once you do it once, it's always enabled. Uh, so even if you reboot, it's enabled. Uh, so there the SSH server is enabled and ready to go so we can get to this Raspberry Pi remotely. So we can tab to finish and exit out of that tool. Um, and so we have SSH done so we can get to the Raspberry Pi remotely. The next thing we're going to do is install our terminal application. So if we do a, a sudo apt-get install screen, so screen is a um, application, a terminal emulation application that lets you get to the serial port. Uh, so it's sudo apt-get install screen. 
takes a second to install the screen application uh, or utility, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then it asks you if you want to update. So it needs a few updates to go with that. So we'll say yes. Um, and that's going to reach out to the internet, assuming you're connected to the internet, of course. Um, and it's going to uh, grab the appropriate files it needs to update screen. And uh, this will just take a second. So as soon as this finishes, um, the next thing we're going to do is you're going to plug in the uh, serial cable. So the, the USB uh, to, to serial. Um, so plug that into your Raspberry Pi or your switch now. Um, and um, and we'll, the, the next step is we'll see that show up. So our update's done. Um, you have uh, hopefully plugged in the serial cable if you haven't done so already. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is make sure that we can see the serial. Um, and it's going to be called TTY USB 0 or 1234, whatever it is. So the way we look for it is do an ls slash dev slash um, slash uh, TTY asterisk. You could just do an ls slash uh, uh, dev slash and look at all the devices, but uh, there's a lot of them. So if we do a TTY asterisk, it's going to show me everything with a TTY. And what we're looking for is at the very end of the list there is the slash dev slash TTY USB 0. Uh, could be a USB 1, 2, 3, 4, depending on how many uh, serial ports you have. Um, but that is what we need. So that's that is our our TTY port. So we've got all this running. So we are done with the Raspberry Pi piece. So now we can go over to your client, whether it be Windows or or Apple or whatever the case. And I'm running Secure CRT application. So we're going to test out our install. So with Secure CRT, uh, what I'm going to do is SSH to my Raspberry Pi, which is 192.168.1.40. The username is Pi. Um, and then the password is whatever you set during the setup wizard. So hopefully you remember what that is when you uh, set up uh, Raspbian. Um, so we'll type that in. So here we are on the Raspberry Pi. So we're on the SSH uh, console of the uh, of the Raspberry Pi. And so the last thing to do is just use screen uh, to connect to the serial of your of your ICX. So we'll do a sudo screen slash dev slash TTY USB zero which is what we determined our serial port was called. Uh, capitalization is important. And then 9600 for 9600 baud. And then if I hit enter, here I am on, this, on, the, uh, on the console of my uh, 7150. So I can do everything you know, remotely that I can do uh, from, a 71, from, a, from an ICX console, right? So everything is available. Um, the only tricky thing is to exit out of here. Uh, it is just a um, control A and then K to uh, kill that console session. So um, that's the only hard part about screen is trying to get out of the thing once you're done. But so that's available to you. And again, if you had multiple devices, you can certainly, um, you know, use the screen application for TTY USB 1, 2, 3, etc. So that's it. Thanks for joining and have a great day. Take care.